Are you tired of sounding just so, so when you play a blues solo? Today, I'll show you how to add a ton of interest by blending different scales. So stay tuned. Hello and welcome, friends, to this episode of the Play Guitar Podcast. I am Lee, and this is the podcast that's determined to make you a better guitar player. No matter if you're just starting out or you've been playing for years, this is the show that will help you become the guitar player that you always wanted to be. If you are new here, make sure you subscribe to the podcast and check out the description for all of the links from the show. Warning, <laughs> warning, if you're if you're here to watch the lick video, this is this is the part two to that. This is uh, the day after I put up a one of my lick videos on YouTube. Uh, we have the audio podcast, and this is where we get deep into everything that we've talked about in the lick video, all the skills that you need to learn, all the tricks that can help us bring these sounds into our playing. So uh, if you are wanting to see the lesson, the lick video, please click the link that should either be popping up right now or it's in the description and uh, have fun with it. This was a lot of fun this week. This is something we we talk about chord tone soloing. We talk about different things that you can do, knowing your scales better, uh, different things that are going to help you move forward and tackle these blue solos. Phrasing is another thing, for example. Well, here's another thing that we can do. Here's another thing that we can think about while we're playing, something that I think about every time I play a blues solo, uh, and that is mixing scales, going in and out of different sounds, different groupings of notes. Uh, say you wanted to get better blues solos. What, what are some of the problems that you might have? Uh, you might have bad rhythm. You might be out of tune when you play. It could be you're just your guitar's out of tune or you're bending the strings out of tune. Uh, you could be playing aimlessly. I hear that a ton. Everything just sounds, you know, like uh, there's no point to it. It could sound like you're practicing. Everything sounds just like scales going up and down. And then the one I hear a lot also is everything sounds the same. Well, with blending scales, uh, we're going to tackle a few of these at a time. We, uh, we're we're going to be talking about note choice, right? We're going to be talking about choosing the sounds like we're a painter, like we have a palette and we can have different paints. And today we're going to learn how to mix the paints. You know, we started we start with primary colors. And then you start to mix the yellow and the blue, and then you get some green, and you, and then the light bulb goes off your head. Oh, okay, now I see where all the other colors come from. We're going to be doing that with scales today. The notes that we choose can bring us those different colors. Uh, so when you're playing blues, what are you usually playing over? Usually you're playing over dominant seventh chords. You'll see it. E7 goes to A7, goes to B7. It's a one, four, five over dominant chords. Uh, sometimes you'll get a song that's a minor blues song. And that is not what we're talking about today. A minor blues song usually starts with, a, 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 usually they'll use minor seventh chords. And you have a one minor seven, a four minor seven. And then sometimes the five chord, that will be a dominant. That's a, a replacement chord that you use sometimes. But when when you're playing over a blues, say a minor blues, you're kind of locked in. Now, you can do anything. There's no rules to any of this stuff. But a minor blues is, is a lot more unforgiving with tension and with outside notes. But our regular blues, where we're playing over dominant sevenths, this is where we can really get into some good stuff. We can start to take a look at these chords that we're playing over and make different choices with our scales to make that sound either we're matching them or we're adding some tension to them too. It's a lot of fun. You hear it all the time. Uh, you, you, when you practice at home and you get used to your, the way that you sound and then you go to see someone play or you, you put on a, a rec, uh, the record, <laughs> you stream something, right? And then you, you listen to oh, a lot of people are using records again now. Maybe I didn't make that big of a, uh, of a problem there, but you start to hear some things that's, that, that are not in your playing. Uh, and this is most likely one of them, mixing scales. Now, 
if you, I, I highly recommend that you start to work on your scale patterns. If you don't know your scale patterns, if you are one of those people that stays in pattern one all of the time, or maybe has pattern one and little extensions above it or below it, or jumps to maybe pattern four or one of the other patterns, maybe has two to give the, give yourself a little bit extra, some extra places on the neck of the guitar to play. Um, you're missing out. You're missing out on a lot. Uh, what, what I would recommend is starting to, uh, you know, uh, not like a new year's resolution, but be resolute in saying within a few months, I'm going to really know the scale patterns. And I'll talk about that a little bit in a minute. So, so we're going to talk about, um, getting into being able to blend different scales together to get really interesting ideas. Uh, what's the first thing that you have to do with that? One, uh, you have to map the patterns, right? You have to be able to see these patterns across the fretboard. Think about it. When we're blending scales, your hand may be at the seventh fret of the guitar, but you may be thinking in two different sounds. The two big sounds we're going to be using is minor pentatonic and major pentatonic. Have you ever done that? Have you ever put your hand, say, at the seventh fret and, and you know, quiz yourself? Well, if I was in major pentatonic, what, what's the pattern that I would play now? If I was in minor pentatonic, what's the pattern that I would play there? Both at the same area of the guitar, uh, but and you might have to move back a fret or up a fret just to, to make it happen. But can you see those two shapes? And then when you get to the point where you've done this enough and it's on autopilot, can you see both of them? Can you see where they uh, share a same note? or where their notes are different. That's the incredible thing. So when we get into playing over blues with these dominant seventh chords, this, we can use all sorts of different tension over those that they allow for that. They actually ask for it. The pattern that we use typically over a standard blues is minor pentatonic. It's wrong. It should, <laughs> it should never work. It had the, the chord has a major third in it and the scale has a minor third in it should not work. We get some of this, you know, it's a horrible sound, but in context, that horrible sound adds just the right amount of tension. So where we think it sounds really, really cool. This is one of those instances where music theory and what we hear, uh, they weren't really on the same page there for a while. Now we're used to it. We're used to, 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 to that sound all the time. Um, but so what patterns we're going to use over this traditional dominant seventh blues, we're going to use the minor pentatonic. We're going to use the blues scale, which is the minor pentatonic with one extra note. It's just a note in between the fourth and the fifth. You go chromatically up there. It's a sharp four, or you could call it a flat five, but it's the note in between those. Well, we're going to use the major pentatonic. So if you're used to playing your minor pentatonics, and your major pentatonics, you know how different they sound. Even though they look very similar, the, the, the patterns, you know how different they sound. We're going to use both of those sounds in what we're going to be doing today. Other scales that you could use, you could use the mixolydian mode. The mixolydian mode is basically the major scale with a flat seven. So you play the, your do, re, mi, fa, so, la. When you get to T, uh, you're going to lower that one. Okay. Uh, there's other ones we could use. We could use the diminished scale. Uh, there, there's, and, and that's as far as I'm going to go. There's other ones too, that we, it, we get more out of the norm, the farther that we go out from here. But can you imagine if you were playing over a blues and you just happened your, to find your hand at the, the fifth fret, uh, and you had all of those scales at your disposal, all of those colors that you could use, what would you be able to do? Some really, really, really cool stuff. Uh, so Next thing you need to do is learn the fretboard. You know if you're challenged there. Most of us are. Uh, it's time. I hate to be the person to, to, to bring this up again. So, but but we're, we're avoiding some things. There's an aversion to learning all of the fretboard. I want you to think of the fretboard as a whole. When I was able to do that, my guitar playing changed and I never looked back. It's, it's never been the same since then. Just learn these patterns. There's only five. You can do it. You can learn the five patterns. It's, it's not something that's beyond you. You can do this. Just think, 
about all the useless things that you've had to learn over the years. And, it, you know, keep count with those. Good luck with that. This is five patterns. So five for, for pentatonic and five for the full scales, minor and major. Actually, they share the same notes. The minor and major just have two extra notes. So all of this overlaps. It's really like you're learning one big scale in four different ways of using it. Just spend some time with it. It's a, it's a, a weekend <laughs> and your guitar playing will never be the same after that. So next, what we need to do to be able to use these scales over top of chords, we need to find the guideposts. We need to find the places that we are rooted in. Rooted is not a word that I just accidentally came across. We're going to look at the roots, right? The roots of the chords. What are the chords that are playing? What are you playing over? And what are the, the strongest notes of those chords? We need to know those. They're there for a reason. These are the most consonant sounds we have. These are the inside sounds. These are the landing points. These are the notes that you, when you are ready to finish a phrase or you need to match something, these are the notes that you would go to most of the time. They are magic <laughs> they're powerful. They are the cornerstone of good phrasing, knowing the roots of the chords that you're playing over and seeing where those sit in your minor pentatonic scales and also in your major pentatonic scales. If you can see those root notes in both of them, you're in good shape. Uh, what's the other things you'd need to know? Other chord tones, the thirds, the fifths and the sevenths of those chords. Uh, when you match a chord, you match a chord. What, what are you listening to? What are the notes that are in that chord? Those are all strong notes because they're in the chord. You will match if you play the third of a chord while that chord is playing. It will work. Will it sound as final as the, the root of that chord? No, it's going to sound different. It's going to have a, a harmony to it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to sound... Uh, uh, people say it in different ways, it might have a sweet sound or it might have a, a floating sound. There's all sorts of different ways that people describe it, but it's the harmony of a major third that you're landing on. Um, well, the other thing I want to talk about is the scales themselves uh, and why pentatonic scales are so appealing to people. Most people don't really know why. They just play them. They sound good. I like them. I'm going to gravitate towards them. Then when they start to play the full scales, things get a little bit more sour sounding. There's more opportunity to uh, make a mistake. Why is that? Well, let's see here. Let's take a look. I played, uh, what was this week's, uh, the key for this week's? It was B. So we hit a B dominant seven to E nine, which is the four chord and then to F sharp nine, that was the five chord, okay? But let's take a look at the, the B dominant seventh here. So we have um, uh, B, and F sharp, B, a D sharp, F sharp, and B, if you do the, the, the bar chord straight across. So we have our root, which is B, our third, which is D sharp, and then our fifth, which is F sharp. Then we have our flat seventh, which is an A. So we have B, D sharp, F sharp, and A. If we played our minor pentatonic, one of those notes is not in there. So we have the B, and we have the F sharp, and we have the A. So three of those, three of our five notes are arpeggio notes. So that is why we love pentatonic so much. We have tons of matching sounds just built in. Where they don't match, in the minor pentatonic, we have a D. Well, we would need that D sharp to perfectly match. That's that place I say where things don't work out so well. Uh, we also have an E, which is the fourth, which is not so tense of a sound. It still is very inside sounding. It's not a chord tone, but it's not um, shocking in any way. So. All of our notes, we have the minor third that has a bluesy sound to it. We have the fourth, which is not too bad. And then the rest of the notes are from the chord. So it's very hard to make a mistake with the minor pentatonic. Now let's look at the major pentatonic. So we have a B, a C sharp, that's our, our second or our ninth. We have our D sharp, which is the third. We have our fifth, which is the F sharp. And then we have a G sharp, which is the sixth. 
major sixth, not a minor sixth there. So we have our root, we have our third, we have our fifth. The one we don't have is the flat seven. We have a major sixth. So we're not even going to the seventh. There's no major seventh or minor seventh. We're, it's just avoiding that sound. So there's really uh, the only two notes you've got is the C sharp, which is the ninth, um, which could be a little tense. And then that six, which sounds it sounds really major. It sounds really great. So with these scale patterns, there's not much we can do to mess up. They're mostly arpeggios. So think about it. If you've been playing pentatonics for the majority of your life, you've been playing a lot of arpeggios. In fact, when you start to learn your arpeggios across the neck, a lot of them are going to look familiar to some things you may have done in pentatonic scales already. Uh, so the other thing you can do is tension and release. Now, when we're talking about mixing scales, tension and release, we used to talk about strong notes and weak notes. Strong notes, like we just said, those are our chord tones, our root notes. Weak notes are everything else. The notes in the scale that aren't them are, are weaker, uh, but wrong notes are even weaker than that, right? But here's a new way of doing this. In this instance, we're going to be using our scales as strong scales or weaker scales, strong scales and weaker scales. When we use the major pentatonic over a blues here, it has a very inside sound because it has that major third. It's not clashing as much. It has that major third. It really fits the chord. I feel it as an inside sound. It, it's, a, it's a consonant sound. Now, if I played the minor pentatonic, there's my tension. So I have that sad tension in minor pentatonic, and then I have that happy consonance in major pentatonic. And I, I said this in the other video, but it's worth repeating here. Think of it. Are, are you just always happy, as happy as you can be, or as sad as you can be? Most people were somewhere in the middle. Right. And that's where the good stuff happens. That's where you, you have bittersweet <laughs> and, and all those different feelings. And things. But but with major, that's as happy as we can get. And with minor, that's as sad as we can get. Here's our opportunity to blend them together, to to get some of these other this get some more emotional content that is maybe hard to put your finger on there. So once you go and start playing over top of these chords, which I hope you do, it, it's very easy. You sit down with your guitar, guitar you go to YouTube, you type in uh, B blues backing track. Then you sit down, you play your minor pentatonic up and down, and then your major pentatonic up and down. Try to do them in the same position on the guitar. Position meaning the fret where you're at. Pattern is different than position. I, a lot of, a lot of um, uh, mistakes with that I've, I've seen. Lately. So what I would love for you to do is go up and down the scales and listen to what they sound like over the chord and then write down uh, how it makes you feel or try to put it into words what that sound is. These are sounds that you will be able to call on and go back and forth. So what I'd like to do now, uh, we're getting close to the end here, is I'd like to play for you the solo that I made for the other video. I'd like for you to take a listen to it. So I'm going to drop that in right, right here. Okay, could you hear these different emotions in that? Could you hear where it was minor sounding? Could you hear where it was major sounding? So I start off with a traditional minor third to major third right away, sad to happy, and then I continued with the happy. 
up to a very consonant note. So that feels pretty good. But then I finished the lick. Can you hear the sadness there? That's the mix. The combination of those two. Now that's a sound that we've heard a million times. You've heard, you hear it in Johnny B. Good. You hear it all over the place. All these uh, mixing of scales, minor third to major third. Uh, when you get that sound, I, I go, okay, that's not like my super happy sound. It's not my super sad sound. This is something different. It's something that I, I can use over and over and over again. Um, and at some point, I went up. <laughs> so really happy. I, I didn't have to keep mixing through all the time. I was mixing scales as we went up through there. And at the end... I went to did a little BB King box there. But even though I established that major sound really nicely, I did the same thing with this first lick. I went into the minor. I, I, I put my finger on the, on the uh, B note at the 12th fret of the B string. And instead of playing the 14th fret, two frets up, I played the 15th fret, which is straight from these scale patterns. So when you see these licks, when you go over to learn them from the other video, you'll see, okay, well, uh, at first you don't see the scale patterns in there. You just see tablature and these notes. But as you start to play them, you're going to start to see fragments and also see, oh, I'm going one direction with this scale pattern. And all of a sudden it morphed into the new scale. These are some things that you might want to do with your practice if you try to take this challenge on that I'm that I'm offering today. Uh, so you could start to play up one scale, say maybe to the D string. And at that point, switch into major, switch back to minor, major and minor back and forth. Those are the two biggies to get. There are all sorts of odd scales and outside sounds that you could use, but until you can master the inside sounds, those are just going to be confusing to you and hold you back. So uh, I would go back and forth, major pentatonic, minor pentatonic, over blues, up and down, pick a string, say, I'm going to change to the other one on this string. Do that a few times. Uh, it may take you a minute to wrap your head around it. Then say, I'll pick another string. And when I get to that string, I'm going to switch to the other scale. Get used to going back and forth. And as you go up the neck of the guitar, try it in all five different scale patterns. <laughs> and that brings me to the big four scale pattern worksheet that I'm that I'm putting out there, which is it's all the patterns that you need right there. Uh, and it's time to do it. There's nothing fancy about it. These are the things that you need to know uh, if you want to do any blues lead guitar playing. Uh, the, the more you know your big four scale patterns, the more unstoppable that you're going to be. That's over at PlayGuitarAcademy.com. Big four scale worksheet. I hope what you got from this podcast is you understand how this works. I know two different patterns and I know my strong and weak notes from the chords. Once you know those things, uh, blending them becomes very, very easy. So I hope I inspired you to, to try this out, to try to take your soloing to the next level. Um, I hope you realize that it's not as difficult as you think it is. It just takes a little bit of memorizing and that's worth the time that you're doing. Uh, I hope I made the process uh, make sense to you. That's what this podcast is all about. Making these guitar stumbling blocks, nothing. So because when you go to something with a good understanding, all you have to do is put the time in at that point and you'll be knocking down goals left and right. Well, I'm going to call it. That's a wrap. Thanks for joining me today for the Play Guitar Podcast. Make sure to hit the button below to subscribe to the show. And if you have benefited from this podcast, please leave a favorable Apple Podcast iTunes review. It's the best way to make sure we get this very valuable content to more guitar players around the world. And if more help, structure, and results in your guitar playing sound good to you, what are you waiting for? We got a master class tomorrow. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be getting together at 5 p.m. Eastern uh, in the Academy. And we're going to be going through a bunch of cool stuff. I haven't even released what it's going to be yet. It's going to be a little surprise for tomorrow. Uh, but love to see you over in the Academy. Plus you get all of the licks, the tablature, the guitar profiles, uh, the backing tracks for all of these lick videos that I've been putting out. Uh, and this is a fun experiment, bringing the podcast together with my YouTube videos. It's been pretty cool. Let me know what you think. 
Okay. All right. Thanks again. I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.